evening, everyone. The reaction of so many people today was, oh, no, not again. Another high school, Columbine High in Littleton, Colorado, this time on the edge of... Mass shootings in America have been in the news countless times over the years. Whilst they are not just limited to America, countries such as Australia banned all semi-automatic rifles and all semi-automatic and pump-action shotguns after the Port Arthur massacre in 1996. America, however, have not done this because of their belief in the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. The likelihood of Hitler being able to accomplish his goals would have been greatly diminished if the people had been armed. USA! 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 For four years we have witnessed... But with their belief of the Second Amendment embedded deep into the way they think about their country, the media and politicians, especially in the early 2000s, had to find something else to blame. Video games. Video games. The video games. The video games. Video games. Video games. Criminals. But the kids are telling us that Evan Ramsey, more than the other kind of virtual reality, where you can live in this immense, but it's not necessarily where you can commit crimes, but you can also go to jail. That does tell us that the kids are telling us that Evan Ramsey, more than the other kind of virtual reality, where you can live in this immense, but it's not necessarily where you can commit crimes, but you can also go to jail. That does tell us that the kids are telling us that Evan Ramsey, more than the other kind of virtual reality. As time went on and the technology improved, we started to get more mature games. But as the more mature nature of video games came in, controversy became ever more present. Critics, including the national PTA, say such video games contribute to violence in real life. And television's Captain Kangaroo says parents are not paying enough attention. Understand that these are not harmless toys, that uh, they can indeed uh, cause great emotional and uh, other damage to a child. But no video game has ever garnered more controversy than a series Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is an open world video game franchise developed by Rockstar Games. Due to the game's mechanics of shooting, killing, stealing cars, running over pedestrians and prostitution, the games have garnered a lot of controversy. Pro Devin Moore who had played Grand Theft Auto day and night for months. Devin Moore shot three people in the head because of a video game? What we're saying is that Devin Moore was, in effect, uh, trained to do what he did. He was given a murder simulator. In August 2005, Moore was convicted as charged, and on October 9th, 2005, he was sentenced to death by lethal injection. The charges were three acts of first-degree murder. In the trial, the judge barred testimony about the possible effects of Grand Theft Auto on Moore's actions. But according to CBS News, after his capture, Moore is reported to have told police, life is like a video game, everybody's got to die sometime. This paired with the already present controversy of Grand Theft Auto only furthered the question, can video games lead to murder? Well, when looking at the sales of video games, we can see that sales started to gain traction in the mid-90s, peaking around the late 2000s. So by this logic, violent crime should have a similar chart. But as this graph about the murder rate in the United States shows, they are lower now than they were in the 1980s. So there is no visible correlation, but politicians are still blaming them. If you look at these video games, if you look at some of the movies out there, some stuff that's on TV, there is so much gratuitous violence, uh, and, and I can't help but think that that just desensitizes children and people in general to what it is about. So video games, I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. Studies can still not agree on whether video games do or do not cause the player to have more violent tendencies. Studies conducted by the University of York and the Royal Society both published studies in the late 2010s, saying that there is no evidence of there being a link between the two. One organisation, however, the American Psychological Association, APA for short, has had conflicting studies throughout the years. In 2015, they say violent video game play is linked to increased aggression in players, but insufficient evidence exists about whether the link extends to criminal violence. 
In 2020, however, they reaffirmed their position saying that there is insufficient scientific evidence to support a casual link between violent video games and violent behaviour. The problem with how this information is being delivered to the general public is best put by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And the press gets the single scientific result that's kind of intriguing and interesting, and they report it as a new scientific truth because it was a scientific study, and especially if it comes from a place like Harvard, where they, they'll put that up in the front sentence mm. without saying, we don't know if this is actually true, we need verification from other studies. Well, a new study finds a link between violent games and aggressive behavior in children. The argument of do violent video games have an impact on the viewer used to be does violence in film have an impact on the viewer. Throughout history, there has always been an ongoing battle between politicians and mass media. For instance, during the Nixon administration, the United States Surgeon General issued a report that appeared to lend scientific legitimacy to the widespread belief that violence in the mass media causes violence in society. The report concluded that mass media violence desensitizes people, makes them more hostile and aggressive and more likely to perform violent acts. And today, we still cannot settle on an answer. So we come back to that question, do violent video games cause people to be more violent? The answer is complicated. From looking back on all the information we've examined, for most people, it would be a no. It doesn't affect them. But with cases like Devon Moore, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold from the Columbine shooting, we can see how there could potentially be a connection, but we don't have clear evidence that everyone can agree on. Going back to Neil deGrasse Tyson. The bleeding edge of science? Most of that will turn out to be wrong. Most of it. Yeah. To try to blame Shakespeare and the violence in Shakespeare and the violence in art uh, for violence that happens in the real world is something that's been tried for years and is always wrong. People must take responsibility. We must stop blaming society and actually blame the perpetrator. And the scientific community predominantly agrees that mass media and violent video games are only one of many factors. Other factors could be poverty and poor parental care that may explain aggression and violence in a society and are surely not the most important ones. But again, that could be wrong. We just don't have enough conclusive evidence. Except for this. It was reported there were nearly 3.1 billion global video game consumers as of mid-2020. For context, there are close to 8 billion people on the entire planet which means nearly 40% of the population now plays video games. And well, there aren't 3.1 billion mass shooters now, are there?